work is a fact of life. But what makes people spend their lives in offices, factories, farms, and schools? What motivates people to do all the things they do? If we, as managers and supervisors, can gain a better understanding of human motivation, the attempts people make to satisfy their needs and drives, we can help them become more productive, more efficient, and at the same time, happier human beings. Perhaps one of the most interesting theories about human motivation was proposed by Dr. Abraham Maslow, a clinical psychologist. Although his is only one of many theories, it warrants our consideration, for in it we may find new insights into what makes people tick, and for that matter, what makes us tick. Maslow contended that man is an ever wanting animal. As one of his needs is satisfied, another appears in its place. Man then becomes motivated toward satisfying this new need. Maslow noted that human needs generally tend to develop in a certain sequence. Beginning with the most basic needs and progressing through needs of higher levels. Together they form a hierarchy of needs. What are these needs? The most basic ones are physiological. The needs of the body for food and shelter. A starving man will focus all his attention on food and be hardly concerned with anything else. But once man's physiological needs are sufficiently satisfied, another need manifests itself. The need for safety. The individual seeks to assure himself that his physiological needs, now satisfied, will continue to be satisfied. Thus, he seeks protection against physical danger, illness, loss of job, and other threats to his security. When an individual's physiological and safety needs are generally satisfied, another need now comes into focus. Maslow called this third need a social need, the yearning to belong, to have friends and acquaintances to love and be loved. Man is gregarious. He cannot live in isolation. But what now? When these three levels of need are generally satisfied, is everything accounted for? Man is still a wanting animal. According to Maslow, his next major need is the need for esteem. It consists of one sense of self-esteem as well as the esteem and recognition one receives from others. Although these four needs are certainly important and motivate individuals to action, Maslow considered them to be deficit needs. Most people spend so much time and energy trying to satisfy these deficit needs that they rarely can direct themselves toward the fifth and most important need, the need for self-actualization. The self-actualizing person, freed at last from the arduous tasks of satisfying the externally imposed deficit needs, is now ready to explore the possibilities of his true self, to use his interests, talents, and abilities to fulfill his highest potential as a human being. At this point, one may well ask, what value is there in knowing about Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory? How does it apply to an organizational setting? Well, let's see. As we recall, at the lowest level is the desire to satisfy physiological needs. Here is one way this may be reflected in a work setting. 
Hello, Mike. How did it go today? Oh, rotten. The heat in there is enough to drive you crazy. And the noise. I can't take it. I just got to find another job. In this example, Mike's physiological needs are not being met. A situation often leading to high absenteeism and turnover. In a work setting, physiological needs may include tolerable noise and temperature levels and a comfortable body position during task performance. The next level in Maslow's hierarchy is safety. Let's see how this manifests itself within the organization. I heard they're gonna lay off five more people in our department. I wonder who's next. If I lose my job, I'd really be in trouble. I'm divorced and with a child to raise. Yeah. I don't know how I'd pay my bills. Here we have relatively comfortable surroundings. But now on this level, employees are concerned with safety and security needs. They want some measure of assurance that what they presently have will continue. That they won't lose it all through injury, illness, or layoff. Next in the hierarchy is the level of social needs. Let's see how these needs may be reflected in the work context. Gee, I don't know any of those guys. Wish I could make some friends. Before they moved me out here, I knew everyone in the plant. I guess the move was a good deal. But sure as hell is lonesome. Really great. What do you think Joe is at a level where his physiological and safety needs are generally satisfied. No problem there. What he is feeling is the need to have friends at work a group with whom he can relate. Maslow observed that people frequently increase their productivity in a setting where social relationships are warm and cordial. Yeah, I, um, I was there and then I was transferred here. I didn't like it at first, but... Pardon me. Mm -hmm. Say, would you pass the sugar, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, you're new here, aren't you? Uh-huh. Well, why don't you come over and join us? Oh, thank you. No point in sitting there alone. My name um, is Nick. What's yours? Nick, I'm Joe. Joe? Joe Hendricks. Yeah. Joe Hendricks. Nice like to meet you. Shelley. Hello, Shelley. How do you this do? is Fred. Hi, Fred. Very nice to meet you. Co-workers of yours. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? Oh, New York. Yeah, came out here about two weeks ago. That's funny. We were just talking about different towns. Oh, were you? Yeah. Uh, I was telling him I'd like to go up to a new plant in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. I hear it's really something. Mm -hmm. really At great. the fourth level of Maslow's hierarchy, is the need for self-esteem, as well as the esteem of others. Say, Steve, here's something for you. What? Where's this from? Oh, I don't believe it. This is beautiful. Fantastic. Top producer award. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Ah, great. To satisfy esteem needs within the organization, human beings must feel that others respect them, that their efforts are recognized. Satisfaction of this need leads to self-confidence, strength, and a feeling of adequateness. Is Steve a totally satisfied man? His physiological, safety, social, and esteem needs are all gratified. But according to Maslow, there is still more. The highest level need, the need for self-actualization, the need to be turned on to life, to feel that everything is worthwhile. However, most people fulfill their self-actualization needs away from the job. Is it all right? Yeah. All during the week, Jane and I work hard. 
But on weekends, we take off to the mountains, to the desert, to the beach. That's what we call living. Many people feel that their real life begins the moment their job ends. But is it possible to be self-actualized in and through one's work? Let's see. I have been a biochemist all my life. What I like about my job most is the diversity and challenge. Besides research and development of new tests, there's always something new every day. Right now, I'm into making training films for students. I really like that the best. Extremely interesting. As a matter of fact, I feel that I'm very fortunate to be able to work in a line of work that I'm very much in love with. Usually after doing a, a good job, a good tune-up job, it gives me a sense of satisfaction that is very difficult to explain. Hamburgers are ready. Oh, so am I. Then we switch to plane two. We go through the same procedure. Bring it down and zero it. Release it. Stop the machine. Index our numbers again. We have a balanced tire. Place the weight at 12 o'clock. Uh, I think I've got it. Do you mind if I try it? Go ahead. Thank you. That needs to always bring this up to the highest apex. Thing. This is really neat. I really like this. We have just seen a few examples of people satisfying their highest need the need for self-actualization through their jobs. For these fortunate people, self-actualization, the need to enjoy what they're doing, to consider it worthwhile and fulfilling, is being satisfied in their work situation. As managers and supervisors, what does Maslow's theory mean to us? Just this, we should be aware of people's needs. We should be aware that as soon as one need is satisfied, another comes into focus. We should be aware that the attempts people make to satisfy their needs are the motivating forces in their lives. If we gain a deeper understanding into what people really want and what they really need, we can indeed help them become more productive, more efficient, and at the same time, happier human beings. Mm -hmm.